<laughs> um, when Mark and I were putting this evening together, we were trying to find a way to map these plays, even though they're very different plays, but they both seem to have one component about relationships going past their expiration point. And the plays individually are about much bigger things, but that was one place where you know it married. So, you know, um, I'm just going to open up the floor to you because I've already talked them to death. <laughs> I think we're still in that yeah. hospital room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nathaniel, what, what was your inspiration for the play? It was an article I had read. Um, in the newspaper uh, about a young girl and, uh, um, uh, well actually it was from, you know it was, it was reading about the four-year-old girl who uh, suffered severe concussion and then you know every day it was like the story just kept another individual kept coming into it and you know as a player you always keep your eye out for possible stories and, and um, <clears throat> at the time I also was um, I sort of got away from running for about a year and went, it was a director of the community center in Dutchess County, so I dealt with a lot of Debbie's and Freddie's, so it all sort of just uh, all came together. I really wanted to write a play about children having children. Uh, yeah. did, you, did you have an idea in your mind? Was, was it clear that she abused the girl? Because my feeling as an audience member, just I wanted to. Uh, have that hope that she didn't do it. That that's just kind of like, did you have a, like, are you clear? What can you tell us about that? Uh, she did it. Um, <laughs> so, but, you know, uh, when you're writing it, I'm not judging her. Um, I, I'm just dealing with her in the circumstances and without judgment. And, and um, you know, I always try to have people understand my characters. Um, you know, they're not born bad, and bad things have happened to them, and then I, I write accordingly. <coughs> so, yeah. You know, so it's trying to break out of that cycle, uh, which Freddie is really trying to do. He's one of my favorite characters, actually. Is there any reason why Rhode Island ended up being like mm. Oh, it's, uh, I don't know, I should say, unfortunately or unfortunately, where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up close to there. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Riley used to be part of Massachusetts, so it's too bad we split. But <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just such a, you know, it's a small estate, and it's, it's uh, that Irish-Italian mix, which is a good mix for a playwright, I think. But uh, <laughs> some dysfunctional shit going on. Uh, Mark, I'd like to hear um, about your inspiration. My inspiration? Um, it's actually based on an argument I have with an old girlfriend. <laughs> uh, no, I wrote this in the late 90s. And um, so it's like close to 15 years away from me. And uh, at the time I was working on a project where I did a lot of research on the saints. And I saw how women were depicted in uh, art, medieval art, classical art throughout the ages. Especially the saints and how men paint them with the serene looks on their faces as they're being mutilated and tortured and whatnot. And um, I uh, was in a relationship, and it was, uh, it was at the end of the relationship. We were together long past the expiration date where, you know, it can end up being homicidal. <laughs> and um, uh, we went to the museum, and there was the painting of the mutilations of the St. Barbara altarpiece, which depicts the mutilation of St. Barbara. And, uh, I found something erotic about it. There was something strangely erotic about it. And uh, it just set off this fight that we both had, you know? And uh, I just, uh, I kind of, uh, I just played with that in my head when it came out, you know? I was also dealing uh, years ago with certain aspects of misogyny within myself, and I wanted to confront that in my writing, you know? So I did that through him, you know? So I was, I was kind of working out a lot of things. So. directed the productions of it, Mark? Or is this no, the first no, this, time is, you directed this is uh, this is like the fifth production. This is the first. This is the first time I've directed it. Is is there anything, any of dynamic that you especially had an opportunity to explore directing it that you didn't see in other productions of it before, since you've been with this for fifteen years? Yeah, I really wanted to get into the. Um, 
I really wanted to explore her, you know, and I wanted to explore the, uh, I wanted to explore the, the, the angle of him almost turning into the mob that's in the painting. I wanted to really, I've never seen it done where the play actually turned into the painting. And I kind of wanted that to happen. You know? What's that saying? That uh, saints have a past, sinners have a future. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about the sinners. Does anybody else have anything? Have we have time for one more? Two more? Yeah, go ahead. Hi, my name's Marcy Italian. I have a question for, for both of you in terms of your writing process. When you sit down to write, do you find that the story kind of unfolds as you're writing it, or do you kind of sit down with a specific idea? Like I know for you, with the there were some parameters already set, a story about children to children, and you had some information kind of filtering in from the outside. But that, what is the writing process like for both of you, or is it different for every piece that you write? Okay. Oh, for me, it's uh, the first draft. Um, uh, I, I don't stop until I'm done. So it mm -hmm. spills out. They say a good pleasure to spill out of you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just, I don't stop until I'm done. And that's with all my plays. Uh, with the first draft, because that's, that's my draft. You know, and, and, uh, and then I, I, I bring in the technical aspect, but it's very visceral. And, and um, uh, if I don't laugh and cry in that first draft, nobody reads it. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, for me, it's basically, uh, just like with that, I, I sat down pretty much in one sitting and I poured this out, you know, and then you got to go back and you got to fix it, structure it, you know, in a sense. Um, but it usually starts with a sound. It always starts with a sound, with some words or something. I'm hearing them, I'm hearing something, the argument in my head or I hear something, you know. It always starts, with, the dialogue, it always starts with a sound. I think, too, I think, um, uh, you know, and, and I'm sure that this is not the first production, but uh, a lot of credit goes to the actors who were, who were first in on the, um, the original uh, production of the play. I mean, Face to Body, I think I wrote 20 years ago. And, um, you know, it's, it's um, they do so much. You work with actors because it's new, and obviously it doesn't come out like this, and you know, even those first weeks of rehearsal. So there's that, that ensemble work that, that right. is just so important. And then just uh, the cast is just tr tremendous tonight. I mean, for me, uh, I was there waiting. How is this story going to end? I mean, I was so, uh, um, shit, wait a minute, I know. But um, uh, I, I, just, I, I was really moved by uh, you know, Karen's work and, and, and also with the actors tonight. So it's, it's really a thrill when you step away from it for so long and yeah. see uh, Mm -hmm. Great characterization, yeah. my goodness. And, and they bring things that I did not uh, put in the script as part of them, so. Yeah. It's yeah. Great, great for you. I have a real embarrassing layman's question to ask such great writers, but Eddie, when you say it, it pours out, is that in a, in a linear fashion? Meaning, uh, you know what I mean? Does mm -hmm. it come out in a, I'm just curious about that as opposed to because uh, because I'm this is the first time I've ever written really as as you know as an actor and and so I find from from as we were saying that when I'm clear on character um, I don't even remotely think about any kind of structure or anything like or I haven't in this particular process just let her gush you, mm -hmm. you know what I mean so I'm just curious about. And I'm sure it's different with every writer, which is why it's an embarrassing question, and forgive me. But I'm just curious about that aspect. If it, if it, if in a sense, as Mark is saying, if it's snippets or it's it's uh, pieces, you know, that then find a cohesion, or if it seems to pour out. Uh, the arc of it is is already in place, if you know what I mean, yeah, as yeah. it comes out. I'm just curious about that. Yeah, no, I, I, it's more, it is linear. I, I'm <coughs> very, very linear. And, and, so I'm and, fucked uh, as a writer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just check. Keep acting. You're a tremendous <laughs> actor. <actress. laughs> I'll read anything. Thank you, you know, darling. So. I just need a serious <laughs> dramaturg to bitch slap me. Well, in well, actually, actually <laughs> if I could join in. A lot of my plays start in the middle. Start? They start in the middle. Right, Sometimes, okay. Sometimes, you know, the, the most exciting part of the play is to be first. And I know that's the that's close to the climax. Okay. And then I'll go back right. and I'll 
kind of work with it, you know. So it's not from beginning to end with me. Sometimes it starts in the middle and I gotta yeah. rework it, you know. So whatever hits you first, you gotta take it as you get it. Right. Play it as it lays. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what you get, you know, it, it becomes a magnet. So anything, once you're inside it, everything contained in the So 30 years from everything. now when I'm writing, <laughs> <laughs> you'll come out possibly more than here. I, I get excited uh, because when you immerse yourself and you throw yourself into it, uh, you know, uh, body, mind, and soul, then then I'm always, um, uh, I, I develop an awareness of where I want it to land. Mm -hmm. So I wait for that, you know, and, and it's very really <coughs> for you know, a player to learn how to wait. And, and uh, what's that last moment? And when I get that last moment, then right, I... Right, that's what I was curious <laughs> yeah. about, because this, um, and it's just totally selfish, but it, it, it seems to have, um, and it's not just because it's an actual person, but there seems to be a very strong, clear beginning and an end. It's just that whole, it's all the shit in between. Yeah. Right? But um, I was just curious about that, and, and that's that's yeah. helpful. Because, you know, obviously different artists, as different painters, work in, in different ways. And I was just curious about that. Thank How do you fellas know when you're, when you're done, when the, when the piece is finished? <laughs> <laughs> You know, Harold Pitt always said the audience tells him when it's done, and, and um, so it's you know we, we have the uh, the advantage of uh, being in having rehearsal. But the word re here is in there, so you just you hear it over and over. You know, it backwards and forwards. When I if I get stuck on page thirteen or I'm stopped, I read page one to thirteen a hundred times. I just try to build the momentum, and develop the rhythm, um, and then you know it's just an inner sense. It's very much like a musical composition that you. You just, you just you have a sense of when things should change, and, 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 and at the same time, trying to remain wholly original, too. Mm -hmm. and I never want the audience ahead of me. So I'm, that's the technical, the 10%, it's a technical part of it, so mm -hmm. it's like trying to be an audience member also, you know, for the most part. So they're both one act. Did you ever think about having another act? Uh, that's always mentioned, but you know, I've tried a couple times and it gets watered down, and you know, it is what it is. But, uh, that's, that's a tough one. I actually want to piggyback on your question. Mm -hmm. Because I've been, um, this play has been done, like I said, there's been like four other productions. Um, it's almost 15 years old. And I added a line at the end of this production. I, um, it always ended where he said, uh, I want to go see if Mrs. Podutsky's still alive. Then he leaves her alone and the lights fade. And I said, no, she's got to tell him that St. Barbara died screaming. Mm -hmm. So I put that at the end. Because I want that to be the conclusion. That, uh, it's no bullshit. This woman died screaming. So <coughs> I have a question about that. Do you think that 15 years ago you would have added that line? No. Right. That's interesting. No, 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 no. And I'm always weary about going back and changing old stuff. Do you mm. change old stuff? No. Because I know like Tennessee Williams rewrote the Battle of the yeah, yeah. forever, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I just thought that I needed that conclusion. She died to me. To give her that. So then the, the play is still alive and changing with you. Right. Yeah, because I was in rehearsals directing it and I did just came up with like frothed up like cream. Mm -hmm. It's like this has got to be safe. Yeah. So you felt that it needed that? Totally. Now. Yeah, it feels like now it's finished. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much.